affliction. And he had to cling to God's character for a lot of time, languishing in prison. Remember, he was despised by his brothers. Yes, I think he was unwise in sharing those dreams with enthusiasm. It might have been a better idea not to say, hey, you're all going to bow down before me. That probably wasn't the greatest dream because they hated him anyway because he was the father's favorite, uh, Rachel's son. But uh, the, the fact is... Um, he uh, was in, uh, he was unjustly treated. He was thrown into uh, into slavery. Uh, he then was unjustly treated uh, by being thrown into prison the, on a false accusation of pot by Potter's for his wife. He is uh, he interprets these two dreams: the 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 the, the butler uh, and the cup cup uh, bearer, and asks them asks him to. Uh, share the dream, the cupbearer to the king, and he doesn't do it, so then he continues to languish. It, it, what was the guy thinking for all these years? God had given him these kind of visions, did he not? These dreams, and then what, where, where are those dreams being fulfilled? And so I have to wonder how he went through that process in prison where there was no evident possibility in his life of those dreams ful being fulfilled, of God's promises being uh, fulfilled in that manner. And yet one day was unlike all the others. Years and years have passed by. On one particular day, he has breakfast in prison, as he always did. And on that day, by lunchtime, he's the second most powerful person in all of Egypt. Now, how could that be? God can take you down very quickly, and he can r raise you up very quickly. The point here is that those dreams were fulfilled and the God's promises. And I have to believe that Joseph really did not get embittered but entrusted himself to God's character. He would not have been able to tell his brothers at the end of uh, Genesis in chapter 50, verse uh, 20, that you meant it for evil to me. And he was honest with them. You meant it to me for evil, but God meant it for good. <laughs> And it brought about this consequence that my pe that God's people were redeemed and delivered from two things, from the uh, famine that was in Canaan, but secondly, and maybe more importantly, from the intermarriage that would have lost their, race, their, their, their national identity as the uh, children of Israel, the people of God. And so he delivered them from there and brought them into, uh, into this country, this land of uh, milk and honey at that time. This, uh, so the uh, idea here that uh, Proverbs 30 illustrates, on the one hand, that was uh, the uh, extreme of aff affliction. Now he's got the ex extreme of affluence. Because now he could be tempted to be take this thing that he's been given, this tremendous position of power and esteem and privilege, and begin to um, make that the source of his identity. And that w that's another temptation, the temptation that uh, affluence has can be something that can cause us, uh, when we have affluence, our temptation, not that wealth is wrong, but it, you have to be realize you'll be tempted to put your identity in that and your security in that. You'll be tempted to become arrogant toward other people if you're not careful. And so you have to recognize it'll be harder for you to live by faith. So we have to recognize those are, that's the downside as well. So Proverbs 30 puts it so well um, in verses 8 to 9. When he makes this prayer, give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, who is the Lord? Who needs him? Things are going my way. Who needs God? We wouldn't say that consciously, but we'd live that. We would become practical atheists. Or the op opposite, I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my God. Uh, or in this particular case, it could be you become poor and embittered and you dishonor the name of God. So there is this, uh, pro this, this uh, prayer where God would give us what we uh, need, what he knows we need, not what we want. My God is able to supply all your uh, needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. But that doesn't mean all your wants. There's a difference between the two. Um, two things. One is uh, we're about to move across the street to the new building.